Chris. I'm from the United Kingdom. I uh, teach English in Shanghai. So my name is Samuel Desjardins. I'm from Montreal, Canada, and I teach grade four and grade five. I'm Miranda, and I'm from Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, and I'm teaching grade one ESL here at Shanghai Taiwanese Children's School with Foresight. Uh, I'm an ESL teacher also back home in Quebec, and Quebec is all about French speaking. So as an English teacher in the French community, I don't have my own classroom. So I go from classes to classes, I'm a little uh, buggy. So for him, me to be in Shanghai, to have only two groups instead of 11, and have my own classroom is just perfect. So we base it on the Ontario curriculum, which is fairly similar to what I was teaching in the UK, teaching children English as a second language and using sort of Western ideas and inside the classroom, as you can see, the centers, big boards, writing, immersive language. So I've got two classes. The class sizes are varied. I've got 22 and 23. So we break down the curriculum into different subunits. So at the moment we're looking at magnets. So we wrap English around magnets. So you know, look at how magnets work, uh, where they're in the world, what they're made of. So right now we are teaching about the planets. Uh, so we're going all into like uh, the galaxy, the solar system, the different moons, and uh, then we're moving forward towards the constellations and the myths and legends. With grade one, the first term was all about just kind of getting to know them, and now we're really starting to get into some reading skills and writing skills. We recently introduced some free writing so the students can write about whatever they want but they have to write with sentences so using big letters and periods and we're constantly assessing each other's work for that and I'm getting some really great writing from them because they love the freedom. Throughout the week we change between doing centers and doing the daily five so on center days we have four stations set up throughout the room usually a reading station, a writing station, teachers work and just like a game fun entertaining like English game and then on daily five days we will let the students choose what what it is they want to do they scatter throughout the room and just work quietly while I get to conference with students so when my students come I usually introduce them we'll do some activities at the mat and some reading and we also do a lot of small group uh, center-based learning so when I get to work with just four students at a time and there's some students on the iPad and some students reading at the library. We have a group leader for each each group that they sit in so they know their responsibilities. The group leader will have to get all the you know pencils, pens, whatever it is for the group. So everybody has a responsibility and that routine's been built since the beginning of the school year till now. Can you tell me just a little bit about your timetable and kind of how your day is broken up? Yeah well it's really simple. Try to wake up around 7 30. We start school at 8. Uh, luckily we leave we live really close to the school so we can just get it by here in five minutes. Uh, after that we start at 8, we don't start class until 8.40. Uh, we usually have two classes, uh, two classes of 90 minutes each, uh, depending on how they're placed in the day. Sometimes we have meetings, uh, and two times a week we have three classes of 90 minutes because we're teaching also health and art. So we'll see the class for 90 minutes at a time, and I either will have two or three classes that length each day. Same students every day. Honestly, 90 minute block for me, is I don't feel it's so difficult. The, the one thing that's really important is just to set a routine. As soon as you get a routine in, the kids know it and they go around. And because we are a program that focuses a lot on uh, the centers, so then we also have like this whole chunk of time where we want students to go to different centers. So even there, four centers, 10 minutes each center, so that's already 40 minutes all of our day. So I feel that 90 minutes is not enough, if we can say, to do everything we want to, but I don't feel like 90 minutes is too long. I wish I had more time with them. Um, because we have to cover so much. You know, they're learning a language and they really need as much immersion as possible. In our program, we cover reading, writing, and listening, and speaking. So when you think about that, 90 minutes, that's only like 20 minutes for each strand. So it's really, uh, quickly fills up your time. We have the opportunity of having multiple co-planning periods as well as well, we have scheduled meetings twice a week, which is great. Yeah, we have some prep time in the morning before you know our classes start. We have some prep time usually after our last class finishes. And then we also have two sessions per week where we get together with like partner and just work out like lesson plans and just materials. There are a lot of resources. Uh, the school give us anything that we actually want within reason. Coming from America where your resources 
resources are not always provided for you, it's really amazing to be at a school where they provide pretty much my wildest dreams to me here. You know, the, the classes are really well equipped, you know, the books and everything is provided and paid for by the school uh, and the kids in the program have everything they need. I have a really nice library, I have a mat for students to sit on, I have whiteboards that I use all the time in my centers, like plastic vegetables and fruits for when I talk about that. I have animal toys to talk about animals, seat cushions so we can sit on the floor sometimes, I have little writing desks, I have like everything I could imagine. It's like if I put it on the list it shows up. One of the biggest resources that I have is my smart board. My smart board is crazy. I love my smart board. I've never had a smart board that's that awesome in any other school. Uh, I feel also the resources like we can see what teachers are doing in Taipei so um, we can look at what they're doing. Also we can look at what last year they done so we can always um, create material using what they have uh, created uh, but honestly I feel that we have a lot of books that we can use ourselves like we do it we create a lot of materials for ourselves because each teacher is different so we really put our own flavor to it. I think one of the best things of teaching lower grade I have the opportunity of having an EA which is like so important when you have younger kids so you just have a, a helping hand. There's quite a few material resources that we have access to um, and there are also a lot of like um, people that we can go to. All of us have a partner that we work with so that's a great resource you know we really help each other basically like create everything that we need in order to you know execute our classes. What's really nice is this program is very very collaborative so my first uh, line of support is my grade partner and we plan all of our things together and we help each other stay organized so when I need help she's the, usually the first person I ask. Um, we also have a site director and a teacher director on site with us willing to answer our questions. Being in Shanghai we have a very small and tight-knit group where seven teachers here and everybody basically shares their experiences and shares their knowledge with each other so we can always piggy off of each other. It's a really small team so we get to know each other really well. Sometimes we get on each other's nerves of course but like we do activities together we go out to for Korean barbecue we go out for sushis and then we do other things than just being in school so that's a really big plus of being in this small Shanghai team. It's really good to have co-workers that you can sometimes depend on inside and outside of the classroom. I'm Hina Tao, I'm the teacher director for the Shanghai um, Taiwanese Children's School. I make sure that we we implement our program the, the way it's supposed to be implemented in Ontario. I've actually implemented a lot of uh, professional development. I try to customize it to what their needs are at that point in time and also um, I go and I visit their classes and I evaluate their classes more in terms of you know what's going really well and what things can we do better. Each teacher it's really great they have their own style and, and by now everybody's established their own routine and they established a relationship with their kids. I'm thankful for Foresight giving me the opportunity. It's opened a gateway into China and where, where it leads me as I said. Um, professional, professional development is offered by Foresight. They provide um, PD sessions. We have experts from Ontario that help us with the curriculum and help us with professional development. The professional development that we have has improved how I teach reading. When I was in Teachers College, I didn't really grasp how to, like the steps of how to get a kid to read because that just seemed like magic. The principals have given us excellent PD that has changed how I teach reading and writing. And my kids' reading and writing has really been developing in like surprising ways. There's a lot of constant observation, which at first can be really stressful, but I also get a lot of feedback on my teaching. I feel that the professional support that I've gotten from my leadership has made me improve as a teacher so much more than I would have if I had been in the States. In the United States, you just get like one or two professional, like official observations, and then you get a sheet, you are graded, and you're done. But here, the leadership is always like in and out of your room. You do have like small kind of personalized meetings with them every week. The involvement of the leadership has grown me as a professional. 
I think one of the big things I've improved on is my classroom management. Last year, my teacher director came in and co-taught with me for a week and helped me establish a lot of classroom routines. And they're much clearer this year and much more fluid in my classroom. So I, I feel a lot more just confident. So I have students that are real challenges and it is incredibly rewarding when I see that they are able to get into the atmosphere of the classroom, behave appropriately, and then their academics can kind of like catch up. They're surprising me that they're showing initiative because they see that I'm putting in effort with them. That's my most rewarding thing is like watching my low level students surprise me. I love my kids. My kids are great and they show me a lot of affection, which makes me feel like I'm a good teacher, you know, and I'm doing something right or I'm, I'm teaching them something. Whether it's, sometimes it's just about being better people, you know? I feel like maybe I'm teaching them to be better people. Yeah, 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 yeah.